Hey, entrepreneurs, are you looking to skyrocket your sales without paying for ads? Join us on this episode of Profit with a Plan podcast, where, where we're with social and AI expert Molly Mahoney, the prepared performer. Molly goes, uh, Molly's viral go live and monetize method has organically reached millions and learn her secrets for creating authentic, engaging content, leveraging AI and chat automation to build deeper connections with your audience. So tune in for actionable tips and real world strategies that will transform your social media. Now, watch now, get what you can to elevate your business. profits in your small business? If you're like most of us business owners, increasing your profitability is always on your mind. And you're probably looking for ways to grow your revenue while growing your company. Well, you found a podcast that helps you share ideas that do just that. I'm Marcia Reiner, known as the Profit Booster and a business growth strategist. I've helped tons of small business owners to establish and implement a tangible plan that guarantees increased profitability, guides your growth, and plans for your future exit. Because building a highly profitable and sale-ready business creates a win-win scenario. That's more money now and a windfall when it's time to let go. And I want to share strategies that I've learned with you on today's Profit with a Plan podcast. But before we get started, I have something very special to share with you. Uh, if you ever wanted to supercharge your business, avoid profit plateaus, operational headaches, or growth roadblocks, I've created a brand new Profit Booster playbook just for you. You'll uncover three essential strategies and the quick way to take action on them. Now, this is not just a single page report. It's filled with impactful strategies, actionable steps, and expert guidance to help you elevate your profits. Go download my playbook for free at boostingprofit.com. All right. I am so excited. You guys are going to have such a fun time on today's episode. My guest is Molly Mahoney, known as the Prepared Performer. She is a sell social selling innovator who specializes in creating authentic video content and leveraging skyrocketing organic social AI and chat automation to market to her clients and help them grow their sales. After creating a video that reached 1 million people organically, she developed her signature go live and monetize method, and it combines her social media ex expertise talent for scaling one-on-one -on -one relationships, and get this, 20 years of performance, performance experience from the stages of New York to Las Vegas. Combining her social media expert and uh, performance experience that has helped her hit a viral of 39 million. Molly has been featured by BeLive, ManyChat, Social Media Marketing World, Traffic and Conversion Summit, Harry Belcher, Rich Seferin, Steal Our Winners, Inc. Magazine, Forbes Entrepreneur, and a whole bunch more. She is always talking on stage somewhere. When she's not helping her clients attract a flood of clients, you can find her singing jazz with her bass playing husband or teaching her kids to stand for joy from their home in California. Welcome, my dear friend and mentor, Molly Mahoney. Welcome. Hello. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited to be here with you. I've seen so many episodes and I just love what you're doing and I just think you're talking about things that are so important because so many people just ignore the profit piece and you shine a light on something we should all be looking at. So thank you. <laughs> thank you. I'm so excited. Okay. So I have experienced your, your brilliance in, in so many different ways. And I really want to share this with the world. So I'm honored that you found some time to squeeze me in and really share about how we can take the ickiness out of sales and really monetize that social media that we all do, but get no results from, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, it's funny because I think sometimes, and we, we all know this, we get sucked into these ideas that take us way away from the actual sale, right? We start creating something um, that is way bigger than we maybe need, or we start going in a direction that seems like, oh, this is a cool, shiny thing. But like, then we need to come back to how do we actually convert this sucker? Right? Well, yeah. you know, the thing that you always kill me with is it's like, okay, what are what are the two things that we need to be doing, right? Get clients and get clients. clients. <laughs> so 
But I mean, there's so many different ways to go get clients yeah. and so many, so many fantastical ideas. Oh, you need to have a webinar. Oh, you need to, to, to do a podcast. Oh, you need to um, call a thousand people every day. Oh, you need, you know, but when it all comes down to it, you just want to talk to people, right? Yeah, it's really all about relationships, whether we're looking at it at a massive scale. Like, you know, I know Tony Robbins and Dean, whatever, they're like doing their giant thing at the moment while we're recording this, depending on when you're listening to it, they're always doing some big giant thing. But like, whether you're talking to a bajillion people through a webinar or you're having a really like personal DM conversation with someone, it's all really about relationships. And then it becomes like, how do we actually create assets that can be out there building those relationships on our behalf so that we don't die because mm -hmm. we're trying to do so much. Right. 24 seven. That's all we got. Yeah. Sleep is important. <laughs> so true. Okay. So when we're talking about social, um, and social is a fantastic way to build things because everybody's looking at it, whether they're looking at it at dancing cats or food recipes or workout routines, they're always looking at it. So you have some great solutions on how you can get in people's feeds, right? Get, yeah. in, get in front of them and stop their scrolling for a little bit so they can engage. Yeah. I mean, the whole thing is really about what I like to say. It's like the confidence to actually show up because it can feel there's the gremlins that, that take us down before we even think about getting on the platforms. Then there's the content that we're creating that's actually going to... Um, you know, to, to get in the place where it is showing up from there, we want to be connecting and then we want to convert. So mm -hmm. how do we actually make those things happen? And there's so many different options, which is like a wonderful thing and also a terrifying thing. So the first thing we always start with is looking at like, what do you actually enjoy and who are you as a human being? And I know some people may say, well, I hate social media in general. And I'm like, okay, well, great. Then you'd better be getting out and getting to all the networking events, all like there's all kinds of uh, calling people on the phone, right? There's other ways buying a billboard in Times Square or something. If you think that's going to work. Um, if we're looking for the best way to actually get in the hands of and in front of our people, social media really is the best way to be able to do that in that terms in terms of awareness, but also in terms of consideration. Mm -hmm. uh, can I tell you a really cool story about yeah. something that just this week? So I was on a private client call and right when we got on, she said, oh my gosh, someone just sent me a message um, because they had, so here, here's what had happened. This person had seen her speak at an event, had booked a call with her, had then signed up for a 90 day program. It was a $5,000 90 day program. And then ghosted. So had not like, didn't actually pay on the call. She said, you know, Oh, I need to get my, can you send me an invoice? I don't have whatever. And, and my client was like, I was really my hesitant. Checks in the mail. Yeah, exactly. My checks in the mail. Um, and then she wasn't responding to the messages about like, Hey, we didn't, you know, we're looking to get you started. She ghosted. So then because of the system that we have in place for this client, part of the system is to make invites to the Facebook group. So she got an email or something that invited her to the Facebook group. And then my client saw her request to join the Facebook group and sent her a message that said, Hey, thanks so much. It's so good to see you. I'm glad that you're, you know, you're here joining our community. And the, the person wrote back and was like, thanks. Yeah. I've been watching your videos. And then she said, she was like, what do I do now? And I was like, this is amazing. So we like did this together. We said, you know, okay. Um, send her a message saying something like, you know, I never heard back from you. Did you want to get started on that program? Now, what is really wild to me about this story is that the person that she was talking to didn't remember which program she had said she was going to sign up for, which is so typical. And we think like, we're the person on the inside being like, oh, they said they wanted to join, but like, you know, we all have so many different offers. We have different opportunities. There's different things going out and at the moment, we were actually promoting a different program via email. And that oh person God. was still getting the information about this different program via email. So this person said, oh, is that the four week program that I've been getting emails about? And I was like, see, people are watching. Like they are reading this stuff that, you know, and she said, oh, actually you had, you had, that's an option, but you had signed up for this 90 day program. 
And then she's like, oh, oh, I, I don't know if I remember. And then my client said, why don't we hop on a quick call? So they hopped on a quick call. Turned out this person had been watching all of her videos. She had a printed out copy of her free gift, all wow. of these things. But we thought like, oh, she's quote unquote ghosted. People are consuming your content on the other side. You, I always say when I was standing on stage, it, it was weird because when I would do musical theater professionally, you would see just like this dark crowd. You couldn't always see their faces. And if people didn't loudly clap or laugh or cheer or like sob, you had no idea. Like you can't hear smiles. You don't know who actually is watching what you're putting out there. Great story and point. And, then, and you know what? It's like people buy emotionally and don't remember they bought, right? Oh, even That is a really good point. Like this person hadn't even actually paid at the time, but people buy things all the time that they forget that they actually bought. I've Look been the there where I'm like, what do I actually have access to? <laughs> you know? That's crazy. So That's this crazy. person ended up paying $5,000 for the program. Like she ended up signing up for the program. So awesome. it's like those extra touch points are so important. Um, and there's a whole other thing I can talk about with that, but those extra touch points are so, so, so important. I love it. I love it. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about how you get in front of those people in the first yeah. place, get all that content so people can start watching it and troll you from their jammies late at night and, and, you know, read this stuff because that's what people, people hate to be sold, right. And get on yeah. that phone call unless they're already committed and ready to come on. Right. 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 Wanna, they want to learn about you and build a relationship with you at a distance yeah. where they feel safe. That's so and true. And what better way is through consistent content. To totally. Because, and we talk a lot about this, that this content is here to instill the buying beliefs. Hmm. You know, Marcia knows what we call it a tree of beliefs because you're sprinkling these seeds of belief. And that way, when you do make an offer, people are already warmed up to what it is that you're doing. So you can, it limits the objections that come up on a call or in a conversation via messenger or however you're doing that on a webinar, it gets them ready. Now, Vogue actually did a study recently. I don't know if you saw this, but they did a study amongst, oh my gosh, my 12 year old and I were talking about this yesterday. I can't remember if it's like millennial, Gen X, whatever, but like millennial younger. and they one younger than that. They did a study on those people to see how they buy. And what they recognize is that this normal funnel that we're used to, that's like straight from awareness, the way that Vogue said it, they said awareness, interest, desire, action. We talk about it in terms of awareness, consideration, purchase, and then retention. Mm -hmm. That that looking at it as a funnel as a, actually isn't the way to do it anymore. And the way we talk about it, which I'll, I'll move into is like this, this circle, right? We call it your social selling circle that you're like, in this loop, but what Vogue said about it, which I thought was really cool, they called it an infinity loop. And I, this all came out after I had been teaching the selling circle thing. So I was like, oh, I'm so glad there's data to back this up now. Right. And so they said it's an infinite loop of inspiration, exploration, community, and loyalty. Mm -hmm. So in terms of what we're creating content wise, it's not only like the, the value go go download this thing, go buy my thing. We really want to be mixing it up so that we are entertaining, so that we're connecting. So we're doing all these different things. And I think for some people that can feel, because it's it's not as linear, it can feel like, oh my gosh, how do I actually keep up with this? Overwhelming. Do I need to yeah. post five times a day and videos and, yeah. and dancing, dancing, dances with, uh, with, you know, whatever, or the ice bucket things or, you know, yeah. all the crazy <laughs> stuff that you see on social media. I know. But I love the way that you bring us together in a way to say people buy from people, mm -hmm. right? And so they're buying from people. So then you've got to act like a person or a human, right? But then you're you're doing things to knock down their 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 beliefs or their concerns, and you're warming them up in ways. So it's it is that infinite loop. Yeah. It oh my gosh, it's like going. your logo. Right. Hello. <laughs> right. <laughs> so so that that to me, it's it's like it's bringing them wherever they jump in on their buyer's journey. Right. Yeah. From, from, like you said, awareness to consideration, right. In bringing them on a journey where they can jump in and, and they start to that know, like, and trust you yeah. in their own way. A right? hundred million percent. And yeah, like you're putting pieces together. 
And, and it, for us, it all starts with what we call awareness playgrounds. And so these awareness playgrounds show up in different ways. Like on LinkedIn, it could be that there's certain hashtags or certain people that you follow mm -hmm. and you just give yourself just 20 minutes a day to connect underneath those posts by, you know, leaving your own insightful comments, different things like that. Um, you're creating content and using that, like I'm using LinkedIn as an example, because I know you do stuff on LinkedIn, like using the specific hashtags that are, that are trending or your people are using on LinkedIn, going to the LinkedIn articles where there are AI articles that you can then comment underneath those AI articles. Like these are all ways that you can show up in these awareness playgrounds on other platforms. It's like um, in Facebook groups or LinkedIn groups are the same. You can get in there, share value, share funny memes, share little moments of um, like, I joined this Facebook group recently called Disney rope drop humor. And it's, do you know what rope drop is? No. <laughs> okay. You know, I'm Disney obsessed, right? If, and obviously like I'm, if you're watching this, maybe we haven't met, but I love Disneyland. And if you get there right at the very, like you get there like a half hour before it opens, you can actually come into the park early on main street. And then right at the end, they have a rope and they do a big announcement and they do a rope drop and then everybody wow. runs into the park. So nice. it's, it's a very like niche term, you know, but this rope drop humor group is so funny to me. And I like, it's in my feed all the time now, because I'm always commenting and like reacting to things. This has nothing to do with my business, but it proves that when we can bring those, those tickle points, as I call them, right? Like we talk about pain points a lot, but what yeah. are those things that are separate from like, are you struggling? You know, have you fallen and you can't get up, which is a really good framework, <laughs> but also like, what are the things that people laugh at? What are the things that people connect over um, those moments? Like, I like to say your weird is your superpower. Mm. So like, did y'all know that Marcia is an amazing dancer? I don't know if you know this, but she is like a salsa mama. So like stuff like that, or, you know, showing the things that you love that are separate from your business allows you to connect with other human beings. Mm. And I think that's, that's where, that's where you can nicely come into their world, right? You're not coming in going, buy my stuff, buy my yeah. stuff. Buy my it's stuff, not like a vulture, like hovering over, you're going to be like the little Oh my gosh, I have to use this as an actual metaphor. Like the tiki birds in the tiki lounge at Disneyland, they're just like tiki, tiki, tiki. They're just hanging out, right? So right. how do you instill more of that type of, um, like build a habit around that more conversational, easier, light type of content, which I know feels like a waste of time sometimes. But if you make a system for it, then it's okay. You just have a system that every Friday you post something funny. But, but, you know, if you think about it though, your, my audience is business owners that are growth minded, looking to get to the next level. Right. Um, yeah. but if I go in there talking like that, then they're going to go, Oh, you're selling me something. Totally. If I go in a place that has a lot of business owners and they're talking about salsa dancing, or they're talking about hockey or, or they're poker, talking about or, Disney, or yeah. they're, they're foodies at the same time then I can come in as a friend. And then because everything I do is branded, they start to see that and go, Oh, what's that? Right. Yeah. Then if you have like the way that Marcia does like a valuable podcast interview or a piece of content, like one valuable piece of content that you're putting out every week, at least then if you're connecting over here about the Peloton or something, once you start to connect as a human, the other things are going to come through their newsfeed because now you're training the algorithm. Oh, this is who I'm connected with. And so they can go from the Peloton bougie bees club. And then all of a sudden they're like, oh, Marcia is not just a Peloton bougie bee. She also like helps people get their profit in alignment, right? We want to work with people. We want to work with people that we enjoy working with. I like that. That's a very, that's a very soft way to get in. But like mm -hmm. you said, it's, it takes some work and it's that one that you're like, why am I doing this? Right. Yeah. And it's also the one that will suck you in the quickest. <laughs> So if you don't have that system, that's going to say, I'm only spending 20 minutes, ding, there's the alarm, I got to get back to working. You could be there three hours later going, oh, cute cat video, cute cat video. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Or like the thing that honestly happens to me the most with this, which I have to really be like, stop it. 
is the vanity metrics are so addictive. So then you start to look at like, oh, this got four likes, but this got 36, but this got whatever. Like I've got to pay attention, but this got 300. What the heck is wrong? Why am I only getting four on this? And I start to pull myself into this like, I'm not an infinity loop. I start to pull myself into this like dungeon and that doesn't do you any good. Like when I was a musical theater performer, I would get up at 5 a.m., I do my vocal warm up. I do all my stretching. I'd get my tap shoes, whatever. I'd march myself down to Broadway, you know, Times Square where the equity building was. And I'd sit out on the street at 6 30 in the morning for the chance to be let into the building to go sing like eight bars, right? And then it's over. And then you have to just wait. If I got myself into a tizzy after every single audition, trying to like have this clenching thing about it working. I never would have booked anything because I would have been a stress case when I walk in the room. Right. And so we have to just know like, this is our job. It's part of the thing is that we show up, we put stuff out there and then have a strategic follow-up plan in place, which is what I'm like so obsessed with, right? That we take that engagement and we actually nurture those people. And then we have some sort of scalable offer, like a masterclass or a webinar or a VSL or whatever it is, we're building our email list, we're building our community, we make offers, then things start to compound and build on each other. It's awesome. This is this is fantastic. But I think there's one thing that you might, I know you know this, but I'm going to say where you're missing, right? Okay. So, <laughs> so here's, you know, I think that if you're not visible and you're not putting out content about your business and who you are and, and the things that you like and all this stuff, when you do get an opportunity to present an offer to somebody, they're going to go out and troll you. They're and gonna stalk you, totally. LinkedIn. They're going to look at your Facebook. They're going to see, does the, is this person legit? She just called me up and, and, and asked to book appointment, right? You did the old traditional sales thing and booked an appointment. They're going to go, who the heck is this? Who's Marcia Reiner, right? They're going to look it up and boom. And when you Google all the content that totally. I posted. And when you Google this stuff, like you look so legit, especially like the link you do and LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, those things are actually showing up on top of the SEO search results right now, yeah. which is not always the case, but like I Googled myself the other day, you know, cause like you got to check from time to time. Yeah. My Instagram is the first thing that comes up when you Google me. It's exactly. Instagram, then mollymahoney.com, then my Facebook, and then the prepared performer. Those are the four top search results, which is my, that's like wild. That's free search results. Nobody's paid to put that ad up there. Oh my and gosh. so it was really funny. I had, um, I had a, 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 a subordinate working with me and I was teaching them and training them. And they were like, how did you get, you know, you type in Marcia Reiner, as long as you spell my last name correctly, R-I-N-E-R. -E I did it. Pages or more of me. And they're like, how did you get all that? And I go over time, consistently putting out good, valuable content. It's so true. And Marcia, I, while you were saying that I Googled you and your LinkedIn is the first, your profit with a plan is the second, your Instagram is the third, your Facebook is next. And then Marcia Reiner is, is like the website is actually there, which is a huge thing that people don't realize. Exactly. Really good. And props to you because you also, I don't know if you know this, but you also have your knowledge panel. Do you know that? No, no, that panel. means so when you're on, and this is actually a hard thing. We've been talking about it on some calls lately that a lot of people don't actually have this, but on, and I don't know, can I screen share? Is that annoying? Cause it's a podcast and maybe we're partly video. Yeah. Well, I, I don't think, they'll, oh. I don't think the audience will grab it. So. Okay. So go Google Marcia. And what you'll see is on the right-hand side, there's this thing called a knowledge panel, which because you have your book, books? it's already books. Uh, thank you. Good point. There, you have this little knowledge panel that shows up on the right-hand side and it takes up a huge amount of space, awesome. which if you don't have it optimized properly, that doesn't show up. So props to you because it's awesome. And it's like a really good thing that shows up as you are the person, because if somebody else was named Marcia Reiner and they could like sabotage that, but it's not, you've got it. You locked it in. Well, you know what? Thank you. I didn't even realize that that was there. But this yeah. whole idea of having social content does so much more than just cat videos. Yeah. You know, one other thing that it does that we haven't talked about is that when you are, when you are doing like a podcast episode like this, you end up saying things that you wouldn't say if you were just 
sitting alone on your own. Like even if you're recording a podcast episode by yourself, sometimes this will happen. Which, are, especially... which are my earliest videos. So don't go look at those. They're horrible. <laughs> oh my gosh. Mine are terrifying. But <laughs> I did another episode this, with somebody this morning and I said, we were talking about how to use AI to really get your voice. And I said, you're going to come up with AI copy that reeks of you. And I've never said that before, but she was like, oh my gosh, like reeks of you. So now we were like, that's something that potentially I'm going to weave into my actual other content that I do, right? When you just said that's free search, I heard like, when you do research, do you do free search? <laughs> that's like, great. That's great. Like, little things come up when you're in conversation that don't happen when you're just sitting in a silo by yourself, cold calling people. Exactly. Okay. So you, you hit on a point that we, we haven't had a chance to talk about yet. You are a amazing, brilliant, like person on AI. You have Thank taught you. me so much stuff. I have literally taken, I, for, for the amount of, I'm dating Chad GPT, by the way. And <laughs> And so Chad has literally taken two VAs off my plate because they, he helps so much with content ideas, copywriting and all this. And I never would have understood how to use AI without you. So and, talk a little bit about how AI can help this content get out too. Yeah, man. And you're doing such awesome things with it too. So I just like really, if you guys have not seen what Marcia has done with AI, it is wild and amazing. So Happy talk to her about it. Coming soon. It's really cool. Um, yeah. So, I mean, there's so, there's so much, right? So we can use it at each phase of the awareness, consideration, purchase, retention, whether that's coming in a circle or an infinity loop or whatever. Um, this, it, it really can be woven into all the different facets. So from the research possibility where we do a lot to really get clear about our ideal client and I, and identifying these buying beliefs. And then we, you know, like in our content club, it seems like a joke, but with actually like two clicks, like copy, paste, click. Okay, so that's three clicks. You can write three months of content. I know, isn't that amazing? That it is cuckoo to me. Like, and and I it used, to take, it used to take all month long, and people would stress over it. Therefore, they wouldn't produce content because it was a time block, a time suck, and they didn't know what to write. I know. But you've and now that. it's like amazing. I know. You still have to work through your own like confidence around it because I had a call with somebody who was like, yeah, I've got like four months written. It's just sitting in chat GPT. And I was like, well, that's not going to do you any good. Right. So meanwhile, he was like sharing other people's YouTube videos. And I was like, ah, you have your own stuff. Um, so on the, on the ideation side, really great. Also, I am obsessed with using it to take data and then restructure it. So like, I'll do a post on Facebook. That's like a giveaway if you drop a question below, we'll pull a winner. Um, like someone will win a call with me or whatever. I'll grab all of those comments. I know you've seen me do it because I love it. I'll grab all of those comments, put them into chat GPT. And I say, okay, organize these comments in a table with the headers, name, question, answer in Molly's voice and category. And it will answer every single question in my voice because I've trained it to write in my voice and then categorize the topics that people are looking for answers on. Market research. Hello, it's wild. It's so cool. Yeah, I mean, the possibilities are like in ser like seriously endless. But it's really just streamlined the entire process. Sure, you gotta do a little front end work and creating your identity and teaching, you know, Chad how to, how to who you are, right? But once yeah. you do that, it's like a couple of buttons. And a question that's like, ba-boom, and you yeah. have so much that, that gets you out the gate instead of looking at that white blinking or, you know, white page cursor. with the blinking cursor going, <laughs> what do I write today? Or what do I talk yeah. about today? You've already reached out. You've connected with your audience. You've done so many cool things that now it can help you populate it. Funny enough, I am the Traika master for a um, for a pro advisors group I'm in. So we had 96 people attend an event on Wednesday okay. and I had to set them up on three party dates called Troikas. Okay. So I put the entire list into Chad and I said, can you match these? Now take the ones that requested Troikas from somebody. It was done in five minutes. Oh I had my one God. mistake. That's and I was so like, awesome. 
right? You know what I did today? Oh my gosh. Today, so we have in our client programs, I know you know this, but we have a lot of calls throughout the week. And mm -hmm. I was trying to put it into a spreadsheet. So I removed everything else from my calendar because they're all on separate calendars. So it only showed our sales stars calls. I took a screenshot of it. I put it into chat GPT and I said, put this in a table. From the screenshot of my calendar, it created a table of my schedule. Brilliant. It's so it does cool. So much, it does so much for us. So, yeah. so you being the AI queen, first of all, you didn't just start this like everybody else did last year or last month, right? No, no, no. So we actually started teaching AI in 2021, which is like almost, you know, a year and a half, two years before ChatGPT came out, which is amazing. Like I'm so stoked, but it's, it's changed so much since then. I'm just so grateful to have had the like deep integration that we have had over the years. It's really fun. But it makes your life easier on so many different yeah. levels. And that's why it's like, that was a side, that was a side thing. I was, I came to you because I was struggling with my content. My content gal that was helping me out made beautiful canvas stuff that was just so pretty, but it was so salesy. And it was like, you know, I thought I was posting really good stuff. And even my, my eyelash girl goes, yeah, that's good. <laughs> you know? And it was, it was awkward. Right. And I thought I was doing good, but it was so pretty, but it wasn't reaching my audience. Yeah. And things like having links that take you off the platform, you know, and you're saying, oh, go check out my video on Instagram or Facebook and you're on LinkedIn. LinkedIn's not going to show that to anybody. No. So yeah, these were so all the great things I've learned from you that have allowed me to get visible to people that I never, they never would have found me before. It's and so now cool. they are. And they're coming to me going, oh, I want to be on your podcast. Oh. Or, oh show me how to do podcasts, right? Like, <laughs> or, or, oh, wow. I loved your LinkedIn article. You know, yeah. I'm, I'm reading it. Wow. Great idea. Great tips, you know, and it's my value piece that I add, but, but learning how to manage the systems and the right stuff to put in there. I mean, you're the, you're the, you're the, you're the, you're the queen. Thank you. It's so good to see you do it too. Like I, I always, and I mean, I love, case. I love the old, I <laughs> I love the old Canva videos and I'm so glad we've moved beyond that or Canva, whatever post, but I'm glad we, and I love Canva, but like, there's so much more juiciness when it's actually you showing up. Right. Yeah. And I always say that it's not what you do in the video. It's what you do around the video that really matters. And so, you know, you know this, but like asking an open-ended question with just text can work so much better for upping the algorithmic, you know, juice in your favor. Uh, and then you talk to those people and then they, they end up seeing your content more frequently because you're telling the algorithm who to show your content to. Exactly. Cool. Exactly. And I that's your it. famous, that's your famous, uh, Brussels sprouts question, right? <laughs> yeah. So the question to ask, if you're looking like, okay, Molly, this seems great because we didn't really give you like an actual step-by-step -step system for this today, but I'll tell you one of the things that will instantly unlock all social media, especially on your Facebook personal profile is to write these five words, Brussels sprouts. Yes. Or no. Um, watch, just watch the magic ensue. People either yes. love them or hate them. They are so polarizing. It is awesome. And you don't have to use Brussels sprouts. You can ask, you know, do you like, uh, is it, is it, Oh, you can have even that craziness of uh, who's the hot dog champ that they, they got kicked out for liking um, vegan vegan hot dogs, Wait, Joey what? Chesney or whatever. Yeah, it's crazy <laughs> stuff. So, so he he got barred from doing the Fourth of July hot dog um, uh, championship, the the food, the hot dog eating thing, because he got sponsored by um, what was it? Uh, the pretend meat. Um, uh, and, uh, and, uh, incredible, invisible, not invisible, uh, it's something invisible, incredible, um, impossible, impossible. <laughs> yeah. So he got barred from, from doing that, but it's like, you know, you could do so many things polarizing yeah. on, on Facebook to get people and with the right, with the right tags, you know, you can grab people in that never would have found you. And then you may think like, what does it have to do with my business? Well, at that point, it doesn't actually matter because you're just connecting with humans and then the right people are going to filter through. So we had this video hit a reach of 39 million. It had nothing to do with business. Facebook paid us $30,000 for it, which I still think is the weirdest thing that's ever happened to me in my life. It is so wild. But and, what was the video about? You know, so at the time, 
Facebook was paying people to do reels because they wanted them to come off of TikTok. They were really prioritizing super weird clickbaity videos. So I went through my phone and I was like, what is the weirdest video that I have? The video was a 13 second video of a bath bomb with bugs in it. Yuck. But there were, <laughs> there were bugs swimming in the bathtub. Yeah, now. so it was just the yeah, water. And I was whispering. I was like, oh my gosh, I was just about to get in the bath with an awesome bath bomb. And I was like, oh, is this lavender? No, they're flipping termites. That's what I said on the video, which I just took because it was crazy. I didn't take it with the intention of posting it. Like I, it was just in the moment. And then afterwards, because of everything that was happening with reels, I wrote on top of it, I got in the bath and saw this and then oh, 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 like the wow face emoji. And the sound that I put on top of it was that trending sound at the time that, oh no, oh no, oh no, 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 no. <laughs> and then I think I said like, I may never take a bath again, but I was using very whispering tech, like language, you know, like ASMR, whatever. Now that video was not attracting my ideal clients, but it gave crazy visibility from the 39 million. We gained about 5,000 followers, which wow. is a giant like drop Please. off. But I'm so glad that the, out of the 39, 39 million, there were actually 5,000 people who looked at my stuff and they were like, oh, I actually do like what she's doing. <laughs> weird, weird, weird. But it, it it, So it could be anything from Brussels sprouts to bath bomb bugs. You can get people to follow you. And then when they follow you, they see all the greatness that you also post and do, which is your business stuff. Because right? you're mixing it up. So, and, and then here's another thing also, I will say that, like if you are going to events and you're meet, meeting people in real life or you have clients and things like that, when you post little bits of human stuff, it re-engages the people that you're already connected to. So we had a client who wrote a, um, a Broadway type musical in 2020 with lots of really well-known people in the industry in this musical. And he did one of these type posts. Like we suggest you do a post that's kind of like this at least once a week. And he did a post like this and this big Broadway producer commented on the post and he hadn't talked to that Broadway producer in years. And so he was like, man, I have been trying to get my stuff in front of this guy for years. And now I ask about Brussels sprouts and he comments like, what the heck? I don't care how you get reconnected with these people. Like let's reconnect. And then we can build the belief around the stuff that you're doing in your business. Fantastic. Molly, we could talk for days. <laughs> I mean, literally days. Literally. Because first of all, you're so fun to be around. And it, what, what is your line if you're having fun? The more fun you have, the more money you make. <laughs> See, I love that line. I love that line. But you are so fun to be around. You've got such fantastic ideas. You're a huge giver at heart. Um, you can always find Molly educating you at least once a week on videos and doing a lot of Great, great, great content. So where can listeners find out more about you and, and the Prepared for Performer and all the great things you're doing? Yes. Okay. Well, we are actually launching a brand new podcast. It's called Authentically Awesome TM, oh. Trademark and Process. So Authentically Awesome, the Authentically Awesome podcast. And if you're on Facebook or LinkedIn, Molly Mahoney is where I hang out. If you're on Instagram, The Prepared Performer is where we hang out there. And if you are like, oh man, I wish I had a very, a full complete system for how to actually do all the craziness they talked about today. I would love Marcia, if it's okay, I would love to gift your community a free two week trial of our content club. So you can get in play with all the goodness. Is that okay? Absolutely. Tell me more about the content club though. Okay. What is it? Okay. So the content club is our membership where we get together once a month to dive deep and actually write a month of content together using AI. So we meet once a month to do that. In addition to that, on another session once a month, I recap all of the latest updates from AI and social media. So we have those two training videos and then we're always adding in extra bonuses. So you've got loads of AI-ified magic, like how to create a funnel with AI, how to write a sales page with AI, how to make an AI avatar that can speak for you. So we have a whole podcast we made with AI, all this stuff using AI without losing who you are as a human being. And it is awesome. 
Perfect. And listeners, when you get in, it's incredibly reasonable. She's not charging enough for this program. So if you get in, try the two weeks, join us. It is so much fun. You're just going to be, your mind is just going to be blown and it's going to make your life so much easier to be able to put out the content that you absolutely need to have in your business to grow your business. So please, and um, the way to go, the way to go to get that, I made a special link just for you. Oh, so yeah, yeah, yeah. it's just to say, how do we get it? Yeah, how do we get it? You're going to go to Molly, M-O-L-L-Y, Molly.live slash profit. <gasps> profit. I profit. <laughs> Molly.live slash profit. It'll give you a free two week trial. It's pretty good. Oh, thank you. You're so Thanks. generous. And listeners, I, you got to get in there because it's just so good. All right. Wow. I hope you found a couple ideas, listeners, that you can put into your business that will help you be more profitable. And I know that content is that, that almost that, I want to say a four letter word or icky word that people know they have to do. They try and hire somebody, that person does it, but they're not, they're not them. So it comes out like Canva reels and you know, the, the wrong stuff and it's not ever working. So if you want your content to work for you, then you got to try it out because it's, she's brilliant, Thank brilliant you. at it. All right. Amazing. Right, right. Okay. So as I mentioned, if you want to supercharge your business and grow it, right, go download my new Profit Booster playbook packed with three profit boosting strategies and the actionable steps that you can take to make this your most profitable year ever. Go grab it for free at boostingprofit.com. And Molly and I would love to hear your feedback and questions while you're at it. Put in the comments in the chat, um, what is your, what is your best, what is your, what is your uh, Brussels sprouts? Is it Brussels sprouts? Is it mountain or beach? <laughs> is it, is it, what is Pineapple it? Pineapple on pizza? Is it yeah. What's liver, your craziness? yes or no? <laughs> Put it in the comments and we'll help you share it out and I get it, it out to the world. So that way you can start getting the engagement that you want in your business. And while you're at it, please subscribe. You don't want to miss next week's show. You can always catch Profit With A Plan on any of your favorite podcast players. Comes out every Tuesday. And we're looking forward to more great profitable plans and information on next week's show. So until then, make your plans and profit with them. Thank you so much, Molly. I love you. You're the best. I love you too.